Right now, Senator Lautenberg laid to rest. We take a look at his life and his legacy, and we'll take you to a funeral today filled with luminaries that had more laughter than tears. And next, Chris Christie, he's stuck with a challenging task of filling Senator Lautenberg's seat here. The question is not just when, we know how he'll do this, but who will he select? We'll discuss. And later, the governor of Mississippi under fire for saying the children are underperforming in school because of working moms. Oops, we'll discuss that one as well. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to RFL. I'm Richard French, and thanks so much for joining us this Wednesday evening, June 5th. And we start tonight remembering the life of New Jersey Senator Frank Lattenberg, who passed away this Monday at the age of 89. Over the past couple days, much has been said of the Garden State's longest-serving senator. Today, at his funeral at a synagogue in Manhattan, Lattenberg remembered by those closest to him, his family and his Senate colleagues. And in a way, Lattenberg very much would have appreciated. Now, we got stories from everything from his service in the military, his service in the Senate, and we got it in both laughter and tears. The chemical industry didn't care for his right to know law, but Frank was tenacious, doing what was right for his constituents and for this nation. The tobacco industry didn't care for his no smoking on airlines. The NRA and its gun lobby didn't care for his fight for gun control measures that he believed passionately could save lives. But Frank always did what he believed was right. Goodbye, Dad. My friend and adversary, I love you. Rest in peace and know that your legacy lives on in your 13 grandchildren. Barbara Mikulski, the longest serving woman in the Senate, has a phrase for those of our male colleagues who really go the extra mile on behalf of women. She calls them our Galahads. Frank was one of them. But he would have been the first to say he was doing it for his daughters and for his granddaughters. Six trips to Israel to learn about our Jewish heritage with my dad. 300 new friends I lost during my freshman year at college when dad raised the drinking age. <laughs> He spoke about two hours, and he wanted to know, he wanted my advice, should he run again? <laughs> what in the hell do you say to Frank Loudberg when he says, should I run again? <laughs> and even then, Frank was slowing a little bit, and he knew it. But I said, Frank, look, I, 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 I think you'll win again, you run again. Um, I think even Christie will vote for you. Uh. Even with all the difficulties and frustrations, he felt like he was in the, wor the World Series every day. His job stimulated him, challenged him, and kept him vital and young. It was the place he wanted to travel for his final curtain. Frank, I was so happy to take care of you when you needed a lot of TLC, but I hurt every day watching you suffer. In return, you told me that I've done everything for you that's possible, except give birth to your children, but you love me as if I did. Rest in peace, my love. I will miss you always, and thank you for the most beautiful memories and an extraordinary life. And I want to bring in our panel on this. Jeannie Zane, a political science professor from Iona College. O'Brien Murray, Republican strategist and our senior political correspondent. Andrew Whitman and Andrew, uh, we both interviewed uh, the center many times over the years. And I, I, listen, he's always been very good to me. But what I liked about him was, especially as he got older, and as they say, one of the only benefits of getting older, he didn't care. He would just say what he thought. Um, and if you crossed me, he'd let you know it. Um, and if it was something that he was passionate about, and especially constituency concerns, he would do something more about than just the lip service. I, I said it early in the week, and I really mean it. He was a genuine article. And with all the phoniness of Washington, he was, I, I think, a welcome breath of fresh air, because you knew where he stood with him. You know, there are two thoughts that, that come to my mind thinking about Senator Lautenberg. One is sitting in his office waiting for a chance to interview him, and there are all these people who are moving in and out of Senate offices all the time who want a few minutes with the senator. And everybody's a little pensive, a little nervous going in. And everybody had a smile on their face coming out, whether they got what they wanted or whether they didn't. The other one was the, the last interview that I did with him, which was just on the, the day of the State of the Union. It was two days before he announced he wasn't running for re-election and would retire. And I, I asked him about three or four different times in different ways if he was going to run again and why not and if age was a factor. And, and he 
definitely avoided answering my <laughs> questions in a way that I knew he knew something was going on, but he wasn't going to say. And he, he, he enjoyed the game. Uh, in and and to you know, service. Jeannie, I, I, learned, I learned some Yiddish terms from two, and uh, some I can't say on television. <laughs> tell, tell. And he would always, I guess he knew I wasn't going to repeat the stuff that he said. It is cable, you can say things. <laughs> well, except I, I couldn't, like, even if the camera's running, I, I, I said this earlier <laughs> in the week, the press sec was just like, like an air traffic controller. Like, no, like, don't say that. Like, what do you think of that guy? What a film the blank and whatever. And I'm like, oh, God, if I could only use this. But, um, he did get a lot of stuff done that, listen, people, um, there's blood alcohol levels because of him. Um, uh, he, you can't smoke on airplanes because of him. Um, we have <clears throat> laws in the books about uh, guns uh, because of him. Uh, he did real tangible things. And somebody said, more people are alive today, stadiums full of people, because of stuff that he did with drunk driving laws. People said they couldn't get past at the time that he did. It just reminds you, you can change lives in Washington, even if it's in small incremental steps. It's not just the huge national stories. And I think his life a little bit of a testament to that. Yeah, absolutely. And you mentioned the drinking age. And you think of the number of people yep. whose lives have been saved after he fought so hard to raise the drinking age to 21. It's incredible. The refugee status for the historically persecuted is yep. another huge milestone, you know, huge policy area. There's so many areas. Terrorism is another area in which he fought so hard. As a social scientist, I will tell you, we remember Frank Lautenberg because he's somebody who fought against Kay Bailey Hutchinson when she tried to defund the NSF from supporting social science research. And that's not something a lot of people care about, but for social scientists, that's a very important step that he took to reach across the aisle and to work out a compromise with her. So there's so many areas in which he changed people's lives and had such a positive impact. You know, O'Brien, one of the things that stood out to me was he was the last surviving um, member of the Senate that fought in World War II. And if you think about so many of the conversations we have here, whether it's Afghanistan, Iraq, whatever the case may be, guys who actually put on a uniform yes. and fought, and to bring that perspective, um, it, it was a lot more common a generation ago in Washington than it is now. You can't over-exaggerate the importance of that. No, you can't. It, it, there's a reason it's called the uh, greatest generation. Uh, the, the men and women that, uh, that defended us back then are, are remarkable men and women, much like the women, men and women of today that will go on to become leaders. And I think yeah, it's a great point about his leading by example. Yes, politics and I aren't the same, no question about that. But here was a man that was very successful, could have retired, done anything he wanted to do. Self-made. And he decided, exactly, but he decided public service is where he wanted to go, and he wanted to go serve. And I think Mario Cuomo has a great quote uh, about men and women that want to go into politics. And he, he basically says, if you're in it and you're afraid to say no to somebody because you're going to lose your job, don't go into it. And I think Frank Lautenberg is an example of that where he went and fought the fights that nobody else might have fought because if he didn't win re-election and couldn't run again because party bosses said no to him, mm. so what? He's got a life to go on with. So God, also, God bless him and his family. It's also the collegial old school approach in the Senate. He, he didn't seem like he cared what letter was in front of your title in the Senate. He was friends with, across the, uh, with people across the aisle. That's how he got stuff done over the three decades that he was in Washington by having friends on both sides of the aisle. Marco Rubio, one of his pallbearers today, and the guy was only in the Senate yeah. two, two plus years. It didn't mean he was, uh, you know, uh, flowers and everything. I, he told you what he thought about <laughs> you. He told you at least to your but face, which not everybody would. But again, people respected the fact they didn't have to guess and remember, his position. He left the Senate. He retired. And he came back in, in, yeah. to, in this case, to save the, the Democrats a seat in the Senate when Torricelli Tor left. Sally, sure. He was off into the sunset moving on, and he just decided well, to come back. He also hated retirement. He regretted yeah. Well, that's a, that's a whole other discussion. But yeah. frankly, there's a lot of men and women, once we retire, would decide, hey, this is great. Let's move on. Mm -hmm. All right, we are going to jump uh, to a break. And when we come back, we're going to stay on the subject of New Jersey with who will fill Senator Lattenberg's shoes here. It's a decision Chris Christie's going to have to make sooner than later. But before we go, uh, more memories of Senator Lattenberg. This from the former New Jersey governor, Jim McGreevy. And even though he achieved financial wealth, ironically, he would drive some of his peers crazy because he was committed to early childhood literacy, to job training, to affordability of, of college education. And so he had a real middle class sense of, I'm going to give back and continue to invest in America.